The release is seen as part of national reconciliation efforts. It comes a day after a failed national dialogue aimed at finding common ground. Kamado was freed following a hearing at a military tribunal. Lawyers involved in the case say that a hundred other CRM members were also released. We are happy for them because first of all we are convinced that they should not have never been arrested from the beginning and then we are also very happy for their families because we think that they are going to have the possibility to be again and to recover the freedom they should never have uh, lost. There should be general amnesty to each and every one so that we can start on a clean slate and this culminating with the, with the end of the dialogue it could really show that government has good faith and then we can see now how they can implement some of the other recommendations. The dialogue could have opened the door to a historic peace agreement that would have put an end to a fight between English-speaking separatist militias and the army. The conflict has so far cost nearly 2,000 lives and forced half a million people to flee. Instead, it was boycotted by separatists and moderate politicians. This dispute has been simmering for decades, but boiled over in 2016 when teachers and lawyers started to protest against the use of French in schools and courts. In an attempt to end the crisis, President Paul Bia called for talks dubbed the National Dialogue this week. For more on this story, we're now joined on the line from Yaounde in Cameroon by Cameroonian lawyer Ako John Penn. Mr. Penn, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. What's your reflection and uh, what's your thoughts on the release of Mr. Kamto? Well, um, the president of the Renaissance, Cameroon Renaissance movement, Mark Kamto, was released at the last day of the dialogue with President Bobia called the Grand National Dialogue for All Cameroonians, which have equally created controversies within the Anglo Forum. For it to be thought that two weeks ago, the same president came out with a state televised message and called for a national dialogue, which he called the dialogue of the Anglophone problem. It is quite clear that the leaders of the Anglophone separatist movement are still hanging and living in the corridors of the current maximum prison in Yaoundé, and at the same time, inside political bodies like Moïse Kamto, who contested inside the presidential elections, were being released with a group of others, mm -hmm. to the dismay of southern Cameroonians and the people in the northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon. We asked for this dialogue inclusive. We tried to find out if really was to solve the underfund problem or to solve the political conflict after the presidential horrible election that took place in this country on the summer of October 2018. The response given after the dialogue does indicate that President Pogia was there to settle political issues with Sangopon brothers rather than harnessing and giving a way forward to the southern Cameroonian problem which has been plaguing this nation for the past three years. The dialogue failed to include on the table and meet Anglophone Cameroonians who have been pressing hard and especially those who were pressing for the separate, uh, the separate summit movement. Um, a lot of them were not granted the sympathy or the amnesty of the head of state. A lot of them have been threatened for punity, in fact, for uh, terrorist charges against terrorism and again, rebellion action against the state. What's the, the basis for his... For what, what's the basis for his release, now, though? What is a ba on what grounds Sorry? was he... On what grounds was Mr. Kamto released? Did he... Uh, I mean, was he given any conditions? There was, there, was, there was really no condition. And we realized that it was not a move. There had been a lot of pressure from the European Union... There have been a lot of pressure from France and the French lawyers in defending Moïse Kamto that President Moïse Kamto should be released without any conditions. We were hoping that the state will continue to carry out the future acts, but we realized that the French 
and the French government has in hand, the European Union has decided so much on the head of state to give the release of the president and all political, political opponents that have been uh, held behind, behind the yard or behind that. And we understand that uh, separatists have shunned the national dialogue which began in, on Monday. I mean, why would other parties boycott these? I mean, and uh, why did the talks collapse? Yeah, within the separatist movement, you will realize a lot of them have been on international warrants, international indictment, indictment. The head of state is calling, I mean, as I said, about two weeks ago, the head of the street called on those countries between Anglophone separatist leaders to arrest them and send them back to their country for trial. And at the same time, a controversy was that the Prime Minister issued a letter of invitation, invited the same people to come for the dialogue. And at the same time, he said it was an inclusive dialogue. And then he was given a condition that for Cameroonians of goodwill, not for Cameroonians with extremist character. And women, that it was just a new way maybe to get some of these leaders arrested and the opinion not to have participated was just right. Here, of being tried or arriving out there and they are being arrested and instead taken to the corridor of the other Muslim prison. Are you at all convinced that President Paul Bia is serious about national reconciliation? Yes, a lot of the moves carried out by the head of state indicated that he was not really willing for national conciliation. And his party, the TPDM, was at the head of all commissions. And again, a lot of what was done in the time of the calendar, the agenda discussed, a lot of things were rejected because all were predetermined and defined by them. In the setting to us that there was one party saga, a party that wanted to annihilate the gallery and maybe prove the international community that it was very dialogue. So I don't think that was a, a ruling stone that got that nothing in it. And that dialogue was just a propaganda to tell the international community that the head of state who is at his 90 is willing to dialogue with Cameroonians. You cannot call for dialogue and you are the same referee. You are the lines man, you decide the rules and you tell the people what to be discussed or not, what not to be discussed. Remember, there's a study and a, a, an advocate by the Teremuna Equally withdrew from the dialogue just 24 hours after the opening of that particular dialogue, and everything was masterminded and muzzled up by the ruling party, and that that will not be dialogue, but we call it a monologue, and that if that is the case, what they call dialogue, some Cameroonians are not part. Like we have not seen that releasing Moïse Campbell, who is the principal of the leader, is not in line with the Anglophone crisis. Why? The main Anglophone movement leaders are still being held captive in prison. It is not dialogue. If there is dialogue, there should be unconditional release of all those who were captured during the Anglophone crisis, and that only Anglophone created the situation, and so their demand and their plight for a federal system of government should be met. That Cameroon should go to the federal system of government rather than being fooled for the word decentralization that has never existed, though announced and written in the Constitution since, since 1996. So we remember that in August, uh, secessionist leader Julius Ayuktabe, the self-proclaimed president of Ambazonia, was uh, jailed for life uh, alongside nine of, of his supporters. But then President Bia did not make any mention of the release of this leader and as well as the other opposition members. Uh, has, he, has he perhaps uh, made any mention of uh, if uh, he'll also be considering uh, pardoning those other you know, activists? No, he, he came out with a decree, given that those who were arrested during the Anglophone crisis with minor crimes, remember two days ago, he released about 333,000 Cameroonians that were held linked to the Anglophone crisis, that would procedure were still pending in court, and not those that have been condemned. And so those that have been condemned were not part of the decree. And this gives us an idea whether Anglophones are really citizens of this nation. This gives us an idea that the spirit of marginalization is still rooted in the Cameroon legal order and within the Cameroon governance policy, that Anglophones will always be considered as those who have been present most often for political change in Cameroon but have never benefited the other side of the coin. Remember, the, 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 the democratic movement in 1990 led to the Trevor Conference, which brought about multipartism, and this we recognize it. Today, Anglophones got up instead members of the French opposition party 
were released from prison, while leaders of the Andrew Ford movement still in prison. It gives us an indication again that if the leaders are not released, a will saw dialogue has its place. It gives an act of forgiveness, because that's what the head of state said, that it was a period for us to forgive Cameroonians who have committed one act or the other. If there really is an act of forgiveness, we need good faith to apply that honesty and sincerity. They are the only two rules that can save Cameroon for this penury. A lot of unemployment in southern Cameroon, a lot of, in fact, no company, no real academic infrastructure, except for the oil wells and oil fields and the agricultural farms of the Cameroon Development Corporation, which is taking on looting people and rendering the region very, very poor daily. How many of these activists are currently in prison as this stalemate continues? Yeah, I, not, we might consider the activist leaders, they said there are just about 10 of them, that all around the nation there are more than 2,000 southern Cameroonians that have been arrested linked to the crisis. To me, releasing about 333 is not really an act of sincerity. We have close to 2,000 persons held in prison, and after releasing 333, every other state media that are clamoring that is the right step in the right direction, I still think if dialogue has to be meaningful, then everybody who has been held captive, it can be a military officer, it can be a police officer, it can be an anglophone, all of them should be released without preconditions. If really this is a period of forgiveness within the nation of Cameroon. And as President Paul Beer, I mean, uh, succumbs to international pressure to either step down or institute uh, democratic reforms in Cameroon, uh, do we know if there's a hint, perhaps, of uh, you know decentralisation or a return to a federal structure in Cameroon? Yeah, within the discussion coming out, uh, the, 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 one of the resolutions arrived at uh, the just and the uh, national dialogue. The one of the resolution was to go back to the United Republic of Cameroon which was the name the country had immediately after the 1972 referendum, that we could go back, the name was the Cameroon. We are expecting a decree to that Cameroon be called the United Republic of Cameroon. And then decentralization will apply to the other eight French speaking countries, and the two Anglophone regions of the Northwest and the Southwest region will be guided and governed by a special status according to the English norm of local community development, which has been a system meaning federalism in its form will be applied in the two English regions, but not to the entire country of Cameroon. The entire country, the other eight regions, will receive decentralization, while southern Cameroon, the northwest and the southwest, will receive a special status of governance where they will elect their governors and they will equally be the House of Peace that was annulled in the 1972 referendum. What is life like for those living in the English-speaking parts of Cameroon? Just yes, quite normal. It, 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 it has not been easy. As I said, it has been horrible. No, in most localities, no pipeline was left. In no, most localities, no national electricity bus. In most localities, no real school. In most localities, no real reference hospital. And you can imagine, we have to move back to the French region to attend school, real schools. We need to move to the French region to attend some refined uh, uh, hospitals, the reference hospital, all of them are located in the French side of the territory. And a lot of the companies that existed in southern Cameroon, they have all their headquarters and pay their taxes in either one or two towns in, 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 in French Cameroon. Life in southern Cameroon has not been easy. In fact, no company, no successful 10th generation companies exist there. And these are some of the things they are saying. Life in southern Cameroon has not been easy. Transportation costs from villages and if it's not headquarters, not even linked by many footpaths, others have been cut off by trains that have never been linked by car or by even a bridge is independent. So as, uh, you know, as the stalemate unfolds in Cameroon, uh, will the residents be able to vote for their own leaders directly, including uh, governors who were previously appointed by the federal government? Now we realize, as I'm telling you, that Cameroon is always very good in writing good documents. The implementations have been very poor. If the decentralization policy adopted by the 1996 Constitution in Cameroon was well implemented and taken into consideration, we wouldn't have even been where we are. Within the decentralization policy, the elite 
the citizens were to elect their governors, they were to elect their mayor. And we saw it in 2007 and 2002, the head of the state imposing what we call government delegates to control the mayor. That were won over by the opposition party, the Social Democratic Front of uh, President Nathan Fudi. After the 1992 election, Nathan Fudi was self-proclaimed the winner of that election. The head of state decided to muscle up control and continue to monitor councils that were gained. We still believe that there is still a positive nature if President Bobia will to secure his legacy. I mean, at 90 years, we need to have good history because of the head of state. It is time, I even asked this evening, that we need to redo on with the new government. We need a new government. The old outdated brain of Cameroon cannot answer the Anglophone problem for more than three years. We wait international pressure to call for a national dialogue. And we think if this is the case, with the real situation, it becomes so doubtful that I said, for the proof of evidence within the doubt atmosphere, with the presence of the dialogue, I will just hope to see what comes out from the presidency. But I think, to be honestly, for 37 years, if you can't do something, I don't believe you will do it in the next six or five years. And we see the former colonial masters of Cameroon, France and Britain watching with uh, keen interest. So what kind of role, if at all, will those former colonial masters play as this stalemate continues in Cameroon? And can they make any positive or meaningful change in that country? Yeah, for the French part, I would say the French government has been behind the total refusal of the government of Cameroon not to accept separation. Because they know very well that beginning federation will mean all agreements, post colonial and pre independent, uh, post independent agreements will be annulled. Hoping that the state Cameroon has changed to a federation, which is not of the French system. The French government has a role, I mean, if there is a decision from President Manuel Macron that dialogue must maintain and that federation will come to Cameroon, we will not see it happening the next day. I will not doubt that the United Kingdom, Great Britain, has abandoned thousand Cameroonians. In one interview I gave to BBC, I told them, if Cameroon is part of the Commonwealth, Cameroon is part of the Commonwealth because of the English-speaking region of Cameroon, we cannot be molested, treated, killed, tortured, avoided, and abandoned by the United Kingdom, and at the same time, the British people cannot act in favor. Britain has a lot to do. I believe if it was a situation in Nigeria, it was a situation... Like I would say, if it happened in South Africa with a British company, they would have responded. But this is not corporate issue because a lot of their companies are massing a lot of work from Africa. When French or British interests are at stake, they have always got to succeed. Remember, they have been the top four founders of human rights movement, and I can't see why people have been killed, top to go avoided from going to school, or that been kidnapped and assassinated, head cut off and international communities keep watching Cameroonians die at the mercy of a brutal and more oppressive regime like that in Yaoundé. There is time for us to think that the friends of Cameroon have forgotten about the people of Cameroon and what they have been thinking of in their interest. Remember, we have Rodeo Cameroon, a powerful gas company that is owned by the British people, and they know very well the decision was just reviewed about two years ago when concessions were made and new by taxes paid by this British company to the government of Cameroon at the very high period of the Anglophone problem. We still believe that the British have a moral standard and that they can do something better for Southern Cameroonians and why not survive the legacy of the United Kingdom. We know British and English people have always been upright and I believe they can do much. Sending the telegram from the, the, the palace in Buckingham, the Buckingham Palace will have a lot to be in Cameroon. Receiving a call from President Emmanuel Macron from the Elysee will really help Cameroonians who are suffering. Political oppression, unemployment, and a lot of social economic reasons. In fact, the rich people consult about why others at home are dying from malaria and typhoid. Mr. Ako John Penn, thank you so much for your time. That was Cameroonian lawyer Ako John Penn just giving us his reflections and his analysis of uh, the developments coming out of Cameroon. The big story making news headlines uh, this hour uh, is that the Cameroonian opposition leader Maurice Kamto has been released. And this move uh, is the latest in, uh, you know, in a series of concessions from President Paul Bia, who is under pressure of uh, a crackdown in, of, in dissent uh, in Cameroon.